For the past few months I have been working on an open source robotic lawnmower that I called Indie Mower. So far I made 4 videos about this project and under every single video you commented that I should use GPS RTK instead of the perimeter wire. In the beginning I wanted to focus on the perimeter wire for simplicity, but I got it to work quite well and now I'm wondering whether GPS RTK would be a better option. The problem is GPS RTK modules are incredibly expensive like $500 or more, but I found one that is quite inexpensive, just $60, and the question is, is it any good? If you don't know what the GPS RTK is, it stands for real-time kinematics, and here is a very simplified explanation on how it works. While normal GPS system or rather GNSS system can position something within meters, GPS RTK can position something within centimeters. Signals from the satellites are received both by the base station and the rover and because we know precisely the localization of the base station, we can calculate the difference in positioning the error and then calculate the exact position for the rover within centimeters. The principle is quite simple, the implementation is a bit harder, but thanks to all the libraries and the support we don't really have to deal with all that. And now the problem is the base station, as RTK won't work without it. Fortunately, in the beautiful country of Poland, we have an open network of base station that is totally free, you can just sign up and use it for whatever you need. There is a high chance you have something similar in your country, so please check it before setting up your own base station. Here is the website of this Polish service in case you are interested. You can find here all the information on how to connect, what ports and addresses to use. I will link it in the description. And now we can focus on the expensive RTK modules. What exactly do I mean by GPS RTK modules are that expensive? There is a company called Ardu Simple, their modules are quite popular. The cheapest one is 167 euros and it does not include an antenna that you have to buy separately, it's between 50 and 100 euros. The pro version is over 500 euros and it does not include an antenna as well. And that's why I was quite excited to try a module which is only 60 dollars and it already includes the antenna. In fact, it includes not only the antenna but everything else that you need to run it, of course except the Raspberry Pi, so we have the module. We have the antenna, we have the antenna connector that clips onto the module and a small header. At the bottom of the module there is a place for a battery, it is not necessary but it's for the real-time clock and to make things easier I 3D printed a few parts to assemble this. It holds the Raspberry Pi, the module, the antenna and the power bank at the bottom to power everything and that will simplify the testing a lot. So my construction for collecting the data is working, the Raspberry Pi is already connected to the network and it is sending all the data to the database on my computer. It's a simple server that I created with a map and with the location and all the current readings from the GPS module. But how did I get it working on the Raspberry Pi? Well, you just simply plug it into the Raspberry Pi, whether it's zero or the normal Raspberry Pi, there is no need for any cables, you just plug it directly to the Raspberry Pi. And then I followed the tutorial on the manufacturer's website, it's definitely not the most detailed one, but it's good enough to like get started within an hour, at least for the rover part, but more on that later. It's very cold today outside, but we have very clear skies, so that's perfect conditions for testing the GPS module. And I can already see everything on the map, so let me just walk a bit. I don't think it works as it should, and I don't know why. Obviously, if you write a bunch of code without testing, it won't work on the first try, so I fixed all the bugs and problems, improved the code a little bit, and also added a plot, so that when we have the module stationary, we can see the difference in positioning. If you are watching my videos, you probably realize that I do like learning a lot. To create all these projects, I have to constantly learn, and with that, Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, can help you a lot. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry experts pretty much on any topic you want. Arduinos, Python programming, Fusion 360, planning, making YouTube videos, pretty much anything you want you can find on Skillshare. There is a great class by Alvin Wan on Python that will teach you all the basics so that you will have the knowledge to start learning the more advanced concepts. And for example, write programs for a Raspberry Pi. There is another great class by Mark Fraunfelder on Arduinos and if you want to build your first robot and start programming, this class will be perfect for you. 
Recently, they also introduced Learning Paths, which is a sequential curated collection of classes that are perfect to master a specific topic, for example, making YouTube videos and managing a YouTube channel in general. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks a lot to Skillshare for sponsoring, don't forget to check out the link in the description. And now back to the video. When you are mowing the lawn with your RTK lawnmower, the weather is not going to be perfect every time and you won't have clear sky all the time. So it's winter, it's quite cold, a lot of clouds in the sky so you can see if the system truly works. I can see that we get still RTK float on all the data that is received from the module. During the previous experiments I noticed that the system sometimes needs a bit more time to heat up and get the RTK uh, solved or fixed data points so we can just wait a little bit I'm very close to the building on that side so that might be blocking the signal I'll move the whole table to the middle of the grass here we have the open sky of course covered with clouds and then we'll see on the plot how the accuracy changes and uh, what is the deviation between the starting point and then later throughout the time Okay, it's been like, I don't know, three minutes probably. And now we have RTK fixed, finally. So on the plot we can see that the accuracy is within two centimeters, which is pretty decent. But we'll see if that won't drift over time, because that would happen during my previous tests. One note here, I later realized that this drift was caused by RTK float. It means that the solution that you get, the positioning, is not super precise because the RTK algorithm was not able yet to solve it perfectly. So the system needs some more time to actually calculate everything. Usually it, it takes about 30 to 90 seconds to calculate the RTK fixed. It sometimes may take like five minutes if the weather is not perfect. So after a bit more time, I started to get the RTK fixed all the time and then the drift was gone. And when we look at the map, it looks very terrible, but as I said, it's very zoomed in. I don't want to zoom out to show you my location, but all these differences are within, as for now, 2 centimeters. And the accuracy of 2 centimeters is pretty decent, considering the price of this module. It's definitely enough for a lawnmower. I would say, you know, up to 5 centimeters is good enough. 10 might be too much. But we are still getting RTK fixed all the time. And it seems to work very well. And now we have plenty of snow, but also clear skies. And I have one more idea. This thing is so precise, of course, once we have the RTK fixed, that I should be able to just simply draw something on the map, like this, in mid-air standing, not really like walking anywhere. Just literally standing and drawing. And also because everything is happening on my laptop in the local network, I can just view the map on my phone and I can also clear the data. And on the accuracy plot, we should see whether we already have the RTK fixed. Okay, let's start with an N. Let's go slowly. Hi. Okay. And oh. Yeah, the O is definitely too big. But that should be my name drawn on the map. And then I tried to draw it again. As you can see, the alignment is not perfect, but it works. And now we can also see the path in the background in the snow. So I tried walking exactly on the path back and forth and then record it on the map. And as you can see, we have a perfectly straight line. All the lines are together. I know it might not be the best way to test a GPS or DK module to draw something on the map and just walk with it. But that's what I did and it seems to work very well. It works very well, but so far we tested only the moving part, the rover, robot or mower that moves. 
What about the base station? Well, I used the network of base stations, but what if you want to set up your own? Because of course you can do that and then the system should be even more precise because you are actually closer to the base station. Of course, there is also a module for that and it looks just like the previous one. I think the price is exactly the same. Just plug it on top of the Raspberry Pi and it has small BS labeled on the module, while the Rover module is labeled, I think, DA. I assembled everything, connected it this time to a full Raspberry Pi, I followed the tutorial and it didn't work. I tried multiple times and did a lot of information on the internet, but it looks like the open source version of the software that they are using to actually run the base station does not have support for this module. So there must be a way to actually add support for this module, but it is not mentioned at all in the tutorial. On top of this tutorial, you can find a description. It is quite detailed on how to run it on Windows, but I do not actually want to run it on Windows and go out with my PC. I want to have it all on a small Raspberry Pi, build it into a waterproof case and put it outside. Unfortunately, this part for now does not work, but I found a few resources that confirm that it does work on Windows. So if you want to try it, you can. Unfortunately for me, I was not able to yet, at least now, the base station to work, but I hope to be able to do that in the future. And Waveshare, if you watch it, please improve the tutorial and actually show how to get the base station to work on the Raspberry Pi. What is the conclusion? I think for that price, especially the module for the rover that works with the Raspberry Pi, is a pretty good solution. The accuracy is good enough for a mower and I cannot wait to implement it on the indie mower, but I have to wait for the winter to finish. I also hope that they will implement the support for the Raspberry Pi for the base station and I will be able to set up it soon and then make more videos about it. I hope you enjoyed this one, don't forget to check out links in the description and see you in the next one. Bye!